Hey, 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 how you doing? It's Cecily here, get all comfy. Um, I'm gonna hang out for a minute or so and see if anybody actually joins me. I know while I'm um, signing on live in the past, a lot of people will come in a few minutes late, you know. I think I might be a, few, a minute late, so if you were on at nine on the dot, um, I apologize, but um, yeah, today is an awesome day. I'm really excited. I have my mug here. One of my new favorites. I love mugs. I love coffee mugs and yeah. So anyway, we'll see if anybody hops on. If you're not familiar with me, <clears throat> Excuse me, I um, am a natural fibroid elimination coach and womb wellness expert. Um, I basically learned how to shrink uterine fibroids 100% naturally through my own personal struggle after being diagnosed with uterine fibroids in 2012. And, uh, you know, at that time, I was told there's no cure or there's no way to get rid of uterine fibroids, but through surgery. So it was recommended uh, that I stop trying natural remedies and sign up for a surgery. I uh, believe it was a myomectomy to be exact. And, um, you know, obviously I didn't go that route, which is a deeper um, story in itself, which is going to be, I'll be going into detail, um, with my thought process for why I wanted to avoid having the myomectomy and why I knew that that was not the route for me in my book, my upcoming book that is, um, so needed. Um, I've been editing a lot just as I have progressed further in my coaching um, as a fibroid coach and learning more about women. Um, hello to Champagne Chrissy. Thank you for joining me. Welcome. Um, but yeah, I'm just giving a little background on who I am, um, why I have the expertise that I have. And I have that expertise because I had uterine fibroids and figured out how to successfully shrink them when I was told that that was not a, a phenomenon. What's up, Cypher House TV? Thank you for joining me. Uh, so yeah, so back to the story. I was told, you know, you have to have the surgery. Um, do you want to have kids was a question that was asked uh, by the doctor. And of course, I wanted to have kids. Um, and that was another reason why I decided that, you know, I didn't want to have that surgery because I was told and informed by the doctor at the time that if I were to have the myomectomy, um, surgery, which was described as a very non-invasive outpatient procedure, you know, it seemed so not um, serious. But, you know, to me, the outcome was serious because she said it was going to accelerate um, my timeline as far as fertility and menopause if I were to have that surgery. But I'm going to talk more about that in my upcoming book. Peace to Goddess and Kosa for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for joining me, Goddess, and thank you for voting for this topic. I'm grateful to be able to deliver this topic that you had um, a part in voting for and choosing. So I want to thank you for participating. Um, and that's why we're talking about today's topic, which I'll go ahead and jump in on, which is my top three dark leafy greens that I recommend for optimum fibroid elimination 100% naturally. That's the topic. What top three greens do I recommend based on my own personal experience with what worked for me to shrink uterine fibroids naturally and to see the best outcome with shrinking fibroids, with, with getting uh, real rigorous results, with feeling the fibroid that I had at the time. I had two. Uh, one was... Um, on the uterus and the other one was in the vaginal canal. Um, but one of them was growing so 
big at one point in time that I could not bend over. And it did not dawn on me. I think it was a good two weeks to where I was like, I woke up one morning, literally. It's not funny, but it is funny because I'm like, I just didn't dawn on me. What's up, Mrs. J L071313? Thank you for joining me and thank you for voting. I really appreciate you participating. And that's why we're delivering this content um, directly from the vote that you had a hand in um, participating. So thank you for sharing your energy with me. And I hope that you're able to um, get some positive uh, insight from today's talk. So back to my story, uh, I couldn't bend over. <laughs> Literally, I could not lean forward at, at work like this. It was literally, I had to like plie squat. Is that a plie? What do ballerinas do where you just kind of go down? I had to do that in order to function and do my daily life activities. Like if you need to, if you drop something on the floor and you bend over to pick it up, I had to do the curtsy to pick it up because I could not bend over. So I'm only mentioning these details. I will go further into these details in my book. Uh, but these tips that I'm talking about today, these top three greens are greens that I consumed on a regular basis. So let's get started, shall we? When I mention my top three greens, I'm going to mention them in my own personal rating of third place to first place. Okay, so just keep that in mind and I'll tell you a little bit more about why. So number three or third place, third runner up for my top three dark leafy greens, what I like to call the DLFs for shrinking fibroids naturally, helping your body, giving your body what it needs is kale. Um, I mentioned kale number as the third runner up because it's so plentiful and it's so common. You know, when I was younger, kale, you know, I heard about kale, but people were not really eating kale on as as often or as much of a large scale as they are today. To me, kale is like the new iceberg lettuce, you know? I'm an 80s baby, so, you know, iceberg was the thing for salads growing up. But kale, you know, which is obviously way, way more green. It's a very dark, deep green. It's a much more meatier field green. Um, is definitely worth mentioning for that reason, because number one, it's so plentiful. Um, unless you live in Malaysia. One of my followers yesterday said she can't find kale in Malaysia. So if you're in Malaysia, I would recommend finding another dark leafy green. I did recommend spinach and I recommended a few others. One of them I'm going to talk about on this list today. But kale is great because, you know, it's deep dark green is kind of a hint that it is high in iron. It's It's got a very iron rich content that it brings to the table. So kale is definitely worth mentioning to help correct uterine fibroids naturally because it's going to help build your blood and help to combat the anemia, which is something that I also experienced as a result of suffering uh, from the symptoms of uterine fibroids and the heavy bleeding, hemorrhaging, uh, mineralgia, all of those things. Um, the kale and the iron in the kale um, is going to help. And uh, I can say that if you're going to eat kale, what's up, Lexi, make it happen. I recommend eating it raw. I recommend not cooking it. I recommend actually not cooking as much as you can. I'm not saying you have to go 100% raw, but maybe juicing or making salads out of all of these um, field greens that I'm mentioning today. It's okay if you have to cook them a little bit, but if you do cook them, I just recommend a light steam why is that? Because you are being, you're making it easier for your body to um, access and immediately assimilate those raw enzymes, vitamins, and minerals. If you avoid, um, you know, cooking them or adding heat to them, to where you're, if you cook them, the more cooked that they are, you're going to be cooking out the nutrition that you need to help break down that thick fibrous tissue that makes up uterine fibroids. So um, kale is my number three because of the iron. Um, there are other um, runner-ups for iron for dark leafy greens. Um, one of them is spinach, which is super common. Spinach happens to not be one of my favorites just because I get the, the chalky uh, reaction on my teeth from spinach. I still do eat spinach from time to time. Um, it's just kind of like a, it was a beginner field green for me when I first 
I would say before I had uterine fibroids, I ate a lot of spinach, you know, because I didn't know about kale. I didn't know about any of the other um, dark leafy greens that I'm going to mention in today's talk. So, um, you know, if spinach is plentiful where you're at, if you're in Malaysia or if you don't like kale, and if you're going for iron content, try spinach. Spinach will be my second recommendation. But kale is the third runner up on this list. So let's keep it moving. And I'm going to tell you about number two. Number two for my top three dark leafy greens to include in your diet to maximize your body's natural fibroid elimination capabilities is arugula. I love arugula. It's known as rocket in the UK. Um, I discovered arugula uh, working in restaurants uh, during college. Uh, you know, a lot of, I worked in a fine dining Italian restaurant, who we will not mention, uh, for some years. And uh, I discovered arugula then, you know, it was just a field green that was peppery and I'd never seen it before. It had this crazy weird name. But little did I know, later on down the line, thank you, Lexi, make it happen. Thank you, I'm glad you're finding these tips useful. Um, little did I know, later down the line, I would find a very beneficial use for this field green, arugula, um, that I discovered when I was working in restaurants. Arugula is amazing for uterine fibroids because it is a superfood um, that has a natural substance in it called indole-3-carbonyl. And indole-3-carbonyl is a natural agent that specifically addresses shrinking tumors that are built from estrogen dominance. So it's almost like a natural plant that was created with specific potent healing abilities that directly address uterine fibroids because uterine fibroids are caused from estrogen dominance. So this indole 3 carbonyl, excuse me, indole 3 carbonyl that is present in arugula is makes it kind of a little bit more optimal if you are looking to shrink uterine fibroids naturally to have arugula in your diet because it is naturally crafted by mother nature, by the creator to help break down uterine fibroids because of that indole 3 carbonyl. So that's why arugula is amazing. Um, it's what you call a cruciferous vegetable, cruciferous, and the cruciferous vegetable family also includes things like Swiss chard, which I've done a YouTube video on the magical wonders of Swiss chard, um, broccoli, which is more common, um, bok choy is a cruciferous vegetable, and believe it or not, kale, which we mentioned as the third runner-up on this list, is also cruciferous. There are others. Uh, watercress is cruciferous, and I could probably keep going on down the list, but arugula happens to be uh, my favorite. I love the taste. Uh, I recommend getting it in your diet and it kind of has a little bit more palatable flavor if you're juicing. I know when I juice kale, I want to say what's up and welcome to, I think it's Huguet So Latte. I probably said that wrong. And K Blog, I want to say welcome to you. Um, the third runner up on the list is kale. We're talking about the second place for my top three vegetables to shrink uterine fibroids naturally, and that is arugula. But yeah, um, get the cruciferous vegetables into your diet. They work wonders. I will say one thing, if you are looking to shrink fibroids naturally, what I know that I did is I ate cruciferous vegetables every day just because I love vegetables, you know? So it was easy for me. You know, I, I learned about the fact that cruciferous vegetables were optimized highly to help your liver and help to balance estrogen naturally. And the indole 3 carbonyl helps to break down the fibrous tissue and stop that estrogen-driven tumor production. So not only was I eating Brussels sprouts, which is also a cruciferous vegetable, I was eating arugula, making that, using that to make my salads or, you know, um, using kale and making kale wraps, that kind of thing. But one little um, tip that I will tell you, K 
Kblog is asking a question, did you eat them raw or cooked? It depends. I did not do raw or cooked 100% of the time, either or. It was a nice balance that worked for me. Um, what I recommended, and I mentioned that about uh, maybe two or three minutes ago, is to eat them. If you're going to cook any of these vegetables, um, only do a light steam so that you are able to access the vitamins, minerals, and enzymes without killing them from too much heat. So, you know, steam them or uh, make a salad or use the kale as a wrap, which I've done. I made an awesome sandwich. I have to find a picture and put it on my um, Instagram page this week. I made a beautiful sandwich from dinosaur kale with hummus and sprouts and all these things. And I'll, I'll put that picture up for you. That was something I did quite often. Um, but as far as Brussels sprouts and broccoli, well, no, broccoli I eat raw all the time. I dip that in hummus and that's delicious for me. So that's, that's a tip. You can eat raw broccoli, at least for me, and it's really delicious. And I don't really feel like this is not good. You're welcome. You're welcome, sis. Um, but as far as like the kale, well, kale you can eat as a salad, you know, but collard greens is another dark leafy green that you could eat. It's not on this list, but, um, you know, you may want to, you may feel a little weird about eating that raw, but I mean, it's really good at, in a wrap if you want to use instead of a tortilla wrap, if you're making a burrito or like I mentioned, I did the dinosaur kale sandwich. Collard greens are great as a wrap as well, but I would say just find a nice balance that works for you. You know, you don't have to eat raw Brussels sprouts. Um, you can cook the Brussels sprouts with a light, uh, like a steam or a caramelize, get them caramelized and it probably takes five minutes to caramelize uh, in some nice olive oil or coconut oil, your Brussels sprouts with your cremini mushrooms. That's something I ate every other day, if not every day. And if it wasn't the Brussels sprouts, it was the broccoli, you know, so, but that's one tip. Find a way to get a cruciferous vegetable into your diet daily to shrink uterine fibroids naturally. That's something I did, you know, and when I was doing it, I wasn't ever 100% sure you know, that this was going to be the day that I shrank uterine fibroids. I knew that it was going to happen, that I, that I got rid of them 100%. And that day finally came. So now, you know, this whole platform is built around telling you the best practices that worked for me and going back over my activities and my habits to tell you what I did that really, really got results. And cruciferous vegetables every day. And if you make a salad, if you're not cooking, I'm sorry, if you make a smoothie and you're not even cooking anything, put arugula in your smoothie. It doesn't have to be too much. Just put a handful of arugula in your smoothie with some bananas, some berries, a mango, um, you know, a date to make it um, a seedless date, to make it palatable, get your hemp protein in there, get you some fresh ginger so that it's nice and, you know, it's got a nice natural sweetness. And you're not even going to notice that you're drinking or having dark leafy greens in your smoothie. These are things that I did every day. So I'm going to move on to tip number one. I get really excited about this because this stuff worked for me. It worked for me. And this is what I tell my coaching clients um, for how you can start to put the bricks in that make your solid natural fibroid elimination regimen that gets you results it, it's one step at a time it's each each of these tips makes one brick at a time but when you put them in place and you do them on a consistent basis you have a solid stable ground from which you can cultivate womb wellness and shrink those fibroids all right so we're going to move on to the final tip my first place contender for your dark leafy green that you want to get into your diet to shrink uterine fibroids naturally. First place goes to dandelion. Dandelion greens gets my first place. The only reason that dandelion greens are getting first place is because they are not as common. And it's similar to switching up your weight routine so that your body does not plateau. It doesn't get used to what you're giving it. It kind of comes from the school of thought or the theory that since dandelion greens are not typically or traditionally used in a salad, or since they're not as plentiful, you know, we don't really grab dandelion greens or see them on the gross, grocer shelves as much as we see kale or as much as we see arugula or iceberg lettuce, which I do not recommend at all. Um, you know, you're giving your body a potent, highly optimized field green for natural fibroid elimination. 
that it's not getting. So it's going to be a new natural um, agent in the form of dandelion greens that you're introducing into your system. And it's going to get some more drastic, positive results from you introducing this potent, dark, leafy green into your body that you don't get often. Um, you know, dandelion is great. It's similar to, it has some properties that are similar to um, the arugula because dandelion is also wonderful to support your liver naturally. So if it's supporting your liver, it's doing things like helping to stimulate the production of glutathione or glutathione, if that's how you say it, um, which helps your body to more efficiently detox the excess estrogen. But another thing that dandelion does um, that differentiates it from second place and third place, arugula and kale, is that it also supports detoxifying your circulatory system or your blood. So that's going to help to combat the iron deficiency anemia that usually develops in women that are facing uterine fibroids. Um, but detoxifying the blood also is going to help contribute to natural hormone balance. So that is why dandelion is number one because it's not as common and it's it's more of a it's a newer um it's kind of going to be a surprise to your system like oh yes give me more of that I, I don't get that often let me go ahead and go an extra mile and do an extra you know little detoxification cycle in this blood and you know it's going to maybe have more drastic effects on balancing your hormones naturally um that is what i recommend as your number one field green to experiment with um, to shrink fibroids naturally. Now, my recommendation for getting dandelion into your diet, since it's not as common, and also, um, I would say, large of a leaf as um, kale. Matter of fact, I've got some dandelion right here because I'm about to get it ready. And the way that I recommend that you take dandelion into your system regularly to start breaking down that fibrous tissue. And that is juicing dandelion. I mean, you can bite this. You can take a bite out of it. It's fine. But you see, I'm chewing this dandelion. And if you ever watched any of my YouTube videos, <laughs> no, this is dandelion. I don't have any arugula, champagne Chrissy, but arugula, actually, you know, it is a good point that you brought that up. Arugula... It's a smaller version of this, this leaf. It's almost like a similar shape or what I would call a fractal if you know about sacred geometry, which is a whole nother lecture. That's part of the spiritual mind-body connection to natural healing. Um, that's part of a quantum talk, which we can get into if y'all are interested in that. Arugula will probably be an arugula leaf this size, you know? And this is dandelion. It's, it's, that's my forearm. Arugula is not that long, you know? So the thing about it is you can put this in salads, which is great, which is very rare. You'll see dandelion in salads at um, higher end restaurants. Yes, 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 ma'am. You'll see it in uh, salads or in like soup or something like that. I recommend eating arugula in salad if it's something that you really want to do, that's great. But what I really recommend for getting the most bang for your buck out of arugula is juicing. You're going to want to juice these beautiful, natural, fibroid fighting leaves to get the most um, benefit and the most yield out of these leaves and these stems definitely put it in the juicer. The juicer is going to break it down and just make all of the natural healing goodness available to you to just drink, you know? Um, it's okay to have this in a salad, but juicing is where you're really gonna wanna do with something like dandelion to get as much of it in on a, a large amount at a time to go in and do damage to uterine fibroids in a good way. So here's um, my little dandelion leaf. I have some traditional green kale or what our friends in the UK, some of our friends in the UK call curly, curly kale. Um, this stuff is amazing. Again, it's more plentiful. I'm about to go and uh, 
I'm actually gonna lightly steam this tonight. I'm making a butternut squash curry, which I'm working on getting footage of for the YouTube channel. So um, definitely follow me on YouTube to see the recipe. But this is the um, kale, but I'm picking this up because I wanna tell y'all something really quickly before I hop off as a bonus tip of something else I did that I just thought about when I had fibroids and I was making smoothies every day, which is something I did. I told you I got cruciferous vegetables into my diet, into my body every day in some way, shape, form, or fashion, right? Something I did when I would juice the vegetables or say I was making a smoothie, and I was going to go and wash and soak the kale. And what I usually do is I would remove the leafy part from this veiny stem. And then I would be left with all of these stems that I cut away or removed um, when I was making a salad or when I was making a smoothie, that kind of thing. You can leave them in when you're making a smoothie. But that's the point that I'm getting at. Save your stems, because that's something I did. I saved my stems of these vegetables, because I said, you know, I want the most bang for my buck as far as nutrients. And I want to do things that are almost like going the extra mile, going harder in the direction of getting more, the most nourishment out of these natural uh, tools given to us that I know are going to help detox my liver, balance estrogen, lower estrogen dominance naturally, and help me shrink fibroids. So a tip is to save your stems, save all of the stems. Eat your salads from the dark leafy green part, but separate and save those stems. And when you get ready to juice, you juice your stems with your other components of your juice recipe. So for example, say I was gonna go down and I'm gonna go cook this in my butternut squash curry, I'm gonna save all my stems. And then when I get ready to show you my juice recipe, my bonus for bumping up your body's natural fibroid shrinking capabilities is to grab my dandelion stems that I saved from earlier in the week, grab my kale stems and juice those babies. And you're getting a lot more concentrated nutrients, vitamins, minerals, and enzymes that you wouldn't normally be getting because you're not going to sit there and eat. You're, when are you ever going to eat the stem of kale? or the stems from your dandelion, or the stems from your Swiss chard, or so on and so forth. Those are things that I did, you know, and I just thought of that now. So that's why I'm inviting you to join my mailing list on my website, which is operationfibroidfreedom.com. Um, the website is actually being switched over to a new platform by yours truly. So bear with me if it looks a little crazy, um, but you can still go on operationfibroidfreedom.com right now and join my mailing list because what I'm going to be doing is delivering uh, mini classes like this with information that you can get on YouTube, on Instagram, and then I'm going to have intensives for those of you that are serious that want to put these building blocks into place in your life in the comfort of your own home with me. If you join my mailing list, you'll take advantage of discounts um, and be on the insiders list for when I release um, more detailed information and detailed tutorials on these tips that I did that worked for me. You know, that, you know, I didn't know when I was doing it. I had a hunch intuitively that this is something that I should be doing. And I said, if I ever have that moment where I become 100% fibroid free naturally, I will share it with the world. So that's what this is all about. I want to thank you for joining me um, because all of this is to show and to share and connect with women that are looking for what I was looking for when I had fibroids and there was nothing like this out there. You know, I truly believe that our job, you're welcome, you're welcome, Champagne Chrissy. Please try this. Um, there are other aspects that make up a sound fibroid healing regimen. Um, you know, I will be, just stay linked on my Instagram page. Follow me, I will follow you back because I would love to um, find out what information based on what I have to share you're most interested in so that I can bring that to the table for you and hopefully get you involved on my YouTube channel, on the Facebook, and in some of these um, master classes and intensives. Because there was a time when I said, I'm gonna share this info and I'm gonna be naturally fibroid free and I'll be able to tell other women. Because our job is to share 
the information that we have, share the knowledge that helped us to overcome the mountains in our lives. We're supposed to go back and contribute and help others get over the same mountains. So I want to thank you for joining me today. I want to thank you for voting in my poll. I have a lot more information in store. And if this was useful to you, please share um, my platform with a friend. Um, share my story with a friend or just tag a friend on some of my posts and let's continue to grow our knowledge that we can all share in and find natural womb wellness for ourselves with these tips, okay? Thank you for joining me, sis. Thank you, goddess. I'm sending peace and healing vibes to you and I will talk to you soon. Peace.